Hi, today's video is going to be on the equipment that you require to perform a titration. So we're going to start with what you need. First of all, you need a stand and a boss clamp, which is this little clamp here, and also a clamp that can hold your burette. Now, some of you will see that you get burette clamps in store, but this one is also sufficient. Then one of the most important elements that you need in a titration is your burette. So you will see that your burette is marked down from zero cube centimeters all the way to 50 cube centimeters. And what's nice about a burette is it's very accurate. On your burette, you can see that on top here, it says 0.05 milliliters plus minus, which means that your burette has an accuracy of two decimal places, which is really nice. If you compare that to a measuring cylinder, which only has um, an accuracy of plus 0.5 milliliters, um, you can see the accuracy is only to one decimal place. So using a burette for a titration is really nice. And I will show you guys exactly how to work the tap and how to use a funnel to put your acid or your base or whatever you are titrating with inside of your burette. Now, another essential element of a titration is a pipette. Now, you get different pipettes that have different volumes, but this one is a 25 milliliter pipette. And if you look very closely, you can see there's a small brown marking on the glass. And this is up until where you will suck the liquid until the meniscus is just above that mark. And I'm going to do an illustration now so that you can see exactly how, um, how it will look inside of your pipette and then also how to get all of that liquid out of your pipette. So that's the pipette. To suck up the liquid you need a red pipette filler. Now these guys are quite fragile, um, especially because it's so easy to suck up the liquid into this um, rubber bulb. And you don't want that to happen, especially if it's acid, because your acid can then sort of eat the, the rubber and then you have this terrible thing that's not working. Okay, then also you require Erlenmeyer flasks. Now, you'll see that I only have two, but you can have three or four. The reason why you need more than one is because when you do a titration, your first titration is always going to be your rough one. And you're going to do at least three accurate titrations, get the average volume, and that will be the volume that you will use in your Erlenmeyer flask. All right, so using the pipette, I'm going to suck up liquid. So in this case, I've only used water for purposes of illustration. And remember guys, if you're working in the lab, you always work with distilled water, especially in chemistry. Okay. So you're going to put your pipette into your flask where you're taking your liquid from and you're going to press the suck button. It's a little button on your red pipette filler and you will see that it will suck in the liquid. Okay, it takes a while and sometimes if it takes too long, you can just push this again and push it in to ensure that there's sort of a vacuum created and then you can just press the suck button again and it will happen slowly but surely. Now this is where it gets really really important because you need to make sure that that meniscus is exactly above that line over there. So you need to check with your eye level. You can see it's not quite there. So I'm just going to push it slightly until that meniscus is absolutely perfect. And that's what you want. And this is going to be exactly 25 milliliters. So now I'm going to take the solution and I'm going to put it into my Erlenmeyer flask, tilting this beaker and then pressing the eject button on the red pipette filler. Make sure that you tilt your beaker. This helps so that you lit literally get that last drop out into your flask. Right, so you just want all of that liquid to go in there. And you want to be as accurately as possible. Okay, you could have used the 25 um, 
cube centimeter measuring cylinder. But obviously, guys, when we, when we do titrations, we work with the most accurate equipment, and that is your burette and your pipette. Okay, we don't use measuring cylinders. So you just make that last little tilt to make sure that last drop goes into your Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so now you have 25 milliliters of solution in your Erlenmeyer flask. This is what you will place underneath your burette. Then you will take your funnel, place it into your burette, and normally we would put acid into the burette. Um, sometimes you can put your bases in here as well. But for the titration that I'm going to show you guys in the next video, where I'm going to titrate sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid, I don't want to put the sodium hydroxide in the burette because the sodium hydroxide tends to form crystals in the, in the tap and then it blocks the flow of liquid. So you would normally put your acid then into your burette. When you work with acid, guys, it's always important that you wear your safety eyewear and your lab coat or protective clothing because you don't want to spill this on you. And if you can't reach the top of your burette, make sure that you lower the burette. Okay, but you, you should try an solution. Make sure your tap is closed. And you will see that it starts to fill, it's starting to fill up. Now when it gets to this point here and it's almost at zero, you can just lift up your funnel and just add in that little bit of extra liquid that you need to get to exactly zero. Now if you're not sure if that's exactly zero, you're going to have to take off the burette, look at the reading perpendicular to your eye to ensure that, that that meniscus is exactly on your eye level. You can see in this case I've got one or two drops too many so I'm just going to open my tap again because I just want to get that last little drop out to ensure that my meniscus is where it should be. All right, that's basically perfect. Your meniscus is just above that line. Another thing that you should, should look out for when performing a titration is air bubbles. Okay, you need to ensure that there's no air bubbles in this area below. If there is an air bubble, you need to open your tap. I'm just gonna show for demonstration. Open your tap, shake your liquid and close it again to ensure that you've got no air bubbles because that might influence your accuracy. All right, so then guys, remember when you do your titration to remove your funnel. You don't want your funnel to be inside of your burette because it might drip some of the solution into the burette and then change the volume. So now what's important when you actually perform your titration is to record the initial value, okay, and to record the final volume. So if I do my titration, and I'll show you guys in the video that's coming next, when you perform your titration, so you open the tap, your liquid goes in, and then you'll observe a color change, because remember, this is for the purposes of an acid-based titration, so you will see the change in color and that's when you know that's your end volume that you require. So the change in volume is going to be the volume that you require to neutralize the base that was inside of your Erlenmeyer flask. All right. I also want to just show you something quickly. When you want to prepare a solution, so let's say you want to prepare a standard solution with a known concentration or you just want to dilute an acid, we're going to use a volumetric flask. Now you can see that this volumetric flask is 250 milliliters or 250 cube centimeters. And it also has an accuracy of two decimal places. So when you record the value um, in volume, you would say 250.00 cube centimeters. So when you want to maybe dilute an acid or prepare a standard solution, let's say you want to prepare a solution of sodium hydroxide, you will add your salt in here and I'm going to do...
So in the next video, when I'm actually going to prepare a standard solution of sodium hydroxide, you will see how to use the volumetric flask. I'm just going to add my salt and I'm going to take my distilled water and I'm going to fill it up all the way to this mark over here. And then you have your standard solution prepared. But I'll show you guys everything when I actually do the titration and um, show you guys how to perform the calculation of a strong acid, strong base titration. Okay guys, thank you for tuning in on The Noble Chemist. Thank you for watching this video, I hope it really helped. Please stay tuned for more videos, especially on my titration and the calculations, and for many more videos to come. And also, please like and subscribe the videos if you want to be notified of the next coming videos. Thank you guys.